This movie is based on a true story. In 2002, an American novelist and her husband went on a tour to Norway with her new book. The couple decided to spend the night in their car. When Naomi woke up, she realized that nothing could be seen through the window due to the snow. Naomi tried to open the door, but to no avail. In a panic she woke her husband Matt, but he also couldn't open the door. Matt tried to start the car, hoping it would melt the snow that had trapped them from all sides. But the engine wouldn't start. The back door wouldn't open either. This made Naomi more and more nervous. She indignantly told her husband that they should have driven to the nearest hotel, but Matt disagreed, because there had been a snowstorm last night. Naomi wanted to call someone, but there was no signal and the battery was half dead. It was necessary to conserve power. They had little food reserves. While Naomi who was 9 months pregnant, was eating a sandwich, Matt was studying a map. Since they were close to the road, Matt believed someone would surely drive by soon and notice them. Naomi began to have back pain, so she also moved to the back seat. The husband worries about the condition of his wife and their daughter, who is due in two and a half weeks. Matt found an emergency kit with a blanket and candles. This would at least provide them with warmth and light. Matt is confident that everything will be okay, but the wife does not share his optimism. Outside, a blizzard is raging, and there's not a soul around. Realizing that help would not come soon, Matt desperately tried to open the door, but in vain. Naomi said she needed to use the bathroom. They had to use towels for this. Naomi didn't like it, but there was no other choice. When the husband looked away, Naomi took a pack of antidepressants out of her bag. Matt didn't know about this. Time passes, but no one has come to help. The couple has only two bottles of water and little chance of being rescued. Naomi believes that they should break the glass and get out of the car, but Matt thought it was a bad idea. He said it was better for them to stay here and wait for help because they would freeze outside. Because of this the couple had a fight. Matt asked his wife to trust him. In the end she decided to do so. The blizzard didn't stop at night. The spouses have been locked in the car for the fourth day, with little food and water. At some point, Matt accidentally knocked over a water bottle and told Naomi that the cap should have been screwed on more carefully. The couple started arguing again. Being in such a confined space was unbearable for them. The car is quite deep in the snow. At night, Matt woke up to some sounds and woke up his wife. They started calling for help, thinking someone was nearby. However it was not a person, but just the sounds of the blizzard. Naomi is crying in despair, the husband is trying to calm her down. The situation was worsened by the fact that the car's battery had died. It was the seventh day. Out of boredom, Matt drew on the window while Naomi slept. Suddenly he realized that the snow melts as he holds the candle close. This could provide them with water and a chance to open the door. Soon Naomi saw that a signal had appeared. She immediately called her father, who was going crazy with worry. Because of her hysteria, Naomi couldn't even say where they were approximately. The phone battery is dead. Matt is bewildered as to why the wife didn't wake him up and hand him the phone. This was their last chance to call for help. It's the ninth day. It's getting colder inside the car. The couple had taken this long trip for Naomi's book promotion, but now it doesn't matter. Naomi is terrified because their food supply is running low. Matt said that he managed to open the window slightly. If they could open it a little more, they will be able to get at least water. Naomi again says that they just need to smash the window and dig their way out, but Matt still thinks it's a bad idea. Here they are safe, while outside they could freeze instantly. Matt suggests just waiting. Naomi blames her husband for what happened since it was his idea to spend the night in the car on the road. Naomi had a panic attack, so she asked the husband to give her the pills from her bag. A few minutes later Naomi felt better, but she couldn't stop crying. Later, the husband asked her why she hadn't told him about the antidepressants. However, Naomi didn't want to talk about it. She is convinced that it is normal to have secrets from each other. It's the 11th day. Naomi suggested writing a farewell letter to whoever finds them. But Matt doesn't even want to consider such an option, believing they will certainly be saved. During this time, Naomi wrote a short story about how an old woman living in Paris accidentally locked herself in the bathroom. She knocked on the walls, trying to call for help, but the neighbors just complained about the noise. Suddenly the couple heard the sound of an engine. It was a snowplow passing by. The couple were shouting and calling for help, but of course no one heard them. Matt can't hold back his annoyance, and feeling helpless, screams in a fit of emotion that he always gets unlucky. Naomi doesn't understand what he's hinting at, then Matt confessed that he was fired just before. Naomi thought her husband simply took a vacation. That's what he told her. Matt was ashamed, so he lied. Matt really didn't want the wife to think of him as a loser, since they were about to have a baby soon. The spouses started arguing again. Naomi resents the fact that the husband lied to her. He in turn blames her for not telling him about the antidepressants. 
It was the 15th day since they got trapped. Matt was trying to melt the snow with the candle again. At this moment, Naomi felt the precursors of labor. Time is dragging by very slowly. While Matt was trying to get water, Naomi realized that she would soon give birth. Matt gave her some food and continued shoveling snow. Naomi dozed off and woke up feeling hot. While her husband was sleeping, Naomi desperately started smashing the car window. Upon waking up, Matt tried to stop her, but Naomi injured him too, screaming that she wants to go home. Matt started to calm his wife, realizing she was about to give birth. Naomi was crying, not believing that all of this was really happening to them. She didn't want her baby to be born here, but there was no choice. Naomi went into labor. Matt was encouraging her all the time, although he was just as scared. Finally, Naomi gave birth to a baby girl. Despite everything, the couple was happy. Naomi couldn't stop crying. Morning came in this icy wasteland. It was the 17th day of being trapped. Naomi was dreaming about pancakes. Right now, any normal food seemed like a luxury to them. Matt told his wife that he loved her. She replied the same to him. They decided to name their daughter Olivia, from the word live. They thought it was perfect for their daughter. Olivia constantly cried, and Matt couldn't do anything about it. He was suffering from exhaustion and dehydration, but he kept digging the snow while his daughter cried. The 20th day has arrived. Matt didn't stop, hoping to get himself and his family out of here. He hadn't eaten for many days, so his strength was running out. Olivia was crying because of the cold, so Matt gave the wife and daughter his jacket for extra warmth. Matt assured that he wasn't cold because he was working. In fact, Matt was on the brink of fainting. The next morning when Naomi woke up, she couldn't wake her husband. Naomi tried for a long time to bring him to his senses before realizing the fact that Matt had passed away. Naomi was sobbing, having no idea what to do now. Naomi and Olivia were left here all alone without hope of rescue. She opened her notebook and wrote a farewell message for those who would find them. However, Naomi tore out the page and crumpled it up, then she started eating the paper because there was no other food. A car passed by again, but Naomi didn't even have the strength to call for help. Her voice was weak and quiet. Naomi had a fit of hysteria. The worst part was that her milk was gone, so she couldn't feed Olivia until she found food for herself. Naomi had no other choice but to use her placenta for this purpose. Fortunately it worked, and Naomi had milk. It was the 24th day of being trapped. The temperature outside had increased, so the snow began to melt. Naomi realized that this was her chance to escape, and she began to make her way through the snow. Naomi couldn't believe that it was all so simple. She took her daughter, and after saying goodbye to the husband, was finally able to get out. Naomi didn't even have the strength to stand up. But despite everything, she managed to do it, and holding her daughter, moved forward. There was the icy dessert all around, but Naomi didn't stop. However, at one point she fell. Strength was rapidly leaving her. Naomi understood that if she didn't stand up, it would be the end. So the woman was able to overcome herself and continued on her way. A plane appeared in the sky. Naomi went in the same direction the plane was flying. Soon Naomi saw a hotel ahead and started crying. She and Olivia were saved. Then a voiceover tells us about the real heroes of this story. Naomi and Olivia were taken to the local hospital with hypothermia and dehydration. To this day, Naomi continues to write, dedicating all her books to the late husband Matt.